Dwayne Brown with the Office of Communications, and welcome to NASA Headquarters. Today's science update will feature new theories concerning Jupiter's icy moon Europa, more specifically, hidden lakes on Europa. In fact, what you will hear today opens up compelling possibilities in the search for life elsewhere in the universe. In the findings I publish in the journal Nature. We're going to have brief presentations from our speakers, then we'll open up for questions starting here in Washington, our NASA centers, and our phone line. Before we get started, let me introduce you to today's speakers. First up, Brittany Schmidt, postdoctorate fellow, Institute for Geophysics, University of Texas at Austin. Tom Wagner, Program Scientist, Cryospheric Sciences, Earth Science Division, NASA Headquarters. Tori Kohler, Astrobiologist and Senior Research Scientist, NASA's Ames Research Center, Moffettville, California. And Louise Proctor, Planetary Scientist at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory in Lower Merrill. So let's get started, and I'll toss it over to Brittany. Thanks, Dwayne. Well, I'm excited to be here with you today to tell you a little bit about an icy moon of Jupiter called Europa, um, which we will show today evidence um, from recent work um, that my team has done, um, my team Don Blankenship, uh, Wes Patterson, and Paul Schenk and I um, have worked really hard uh, on this project. And if to put, Jupiter, or to put Europa in a little bit of context, this is an image of Europa. If you were to look up into the night sky tonight, much like Galileo did 400 years ago, you would see the brightest point of light in the sky is actually Jupiter. And if you looked at it with binoculars or a small telescope, you'd notice four tiny bright flashes of light. And these are the Galilean satellites. Of these, Europa is the second most, or second innermost moon, and the first icy moon of Jupiter. Europa is covered by a thick layer of ice uh, containing a subsurface uh, ocean, and then a deeper rocky mantle and possibly iron core. We're excited about Europa because it represents a place that's somehow alien and yet strangely familiar, and may be a place where there's existence of life in the solar system today. And so um, I'm excited to tell you about lakes on Europa. Um, so if I could have the first graphic. Um, these are two images of geologic terrain taken by the Galileo spacecraft, and they show what's called chaos terrain. These are broken up regions of the surface characterized by a hummocky brown textured material we call matrix and large icebergs in many cases, which you can see in both of these images. Um, one of the motivations for this study was to try to understand why are these two features so similar and so different. Um, on the left, you're seeing Thera Macula, and on the right, you're seeing Connemara Chaos. Connemara Chaos is, in fact, perhaps the archetype of chaos terrain and gives us a picture of what Europa's activity may have looked like. And it's been thought for some time that this represented the interaction of ice and water. But how that, mo how that actually works out has been, has, has needed more explanation. And so uh, we went to work uh, on trying to understand this. And so the way that we gave perspective to the problem of chaos formation on Europa was to look at environments on Earth where water and ice interact. These two important analogs or examples of this process here on Earth are subglacial volcanoes and collapsing ice shelves. And so in a subglacial volcano, essentially what you have is a heat source underneath a thick cover of ice. And what it does is to create localized melt that actually forms a lens-shaped uh, lens lake just below the surface of the ice. What's interesting about that is that the water kind of sits there and gets to interact with the ice above. In Antarctica, we see great examples of collapsing ice shelves. What these ice shelves do is they sit there for millions of years and then fill up with fractures and then break under their own weight or with help from the water that gets into fractures in those environments. And so with that context, we formulated a model for how Europa might work. 
So I'm going to show you a little demonstration before I show you an image. So if you imagine that we start off with Europa basically made up of ice that's fractured, um, but basically just sitting there. And then we add some water. This water comes up from below. It's, caused, it's melting that's caused by a plume of material, much like a mantle plume on the Earth, coming up underneath this brittle ice and filling it up with water. As the lake forms, you actually start to see the icebergs float. You notice that these have been turning around and rotating in the glass. In the case of Europa, there's also a thick material called matrix material that's crushed up ice um, that sits also on the surface of the water. So you never have liquid water really on the surface, but the water is actually causing the icebergs to float and rotate and to break up the ice around it. But what's interesting is that if you were to go back and look at this particular lake on Europa, much later, it would actually be frozen out and maybe resemble something like this, where you've got icebergs and matrix material pushed up, but the entire thing frozen out. And so um, in the next slide, we have an image of what that process might look like. It's just a cartoon image. On the left, we're showing a collapsing lake with icebergs popped up above the surface and, a, and the matrix material starting to fill up with salt-rich water from the lake below. Um, this is the process that breaks up the surface and causes it to look the way we think it does. Um, on the right-hand side, we see a snapshot of this process much later, once the ice or once the water in the lake is actually frozen out. One of the interesting observations of Europa has been that there are chaos features that are dropped down below the surface and chaos features that are perched up above the surface. These dome-like textures, they always have in common some icebergs or some broken up material, but one's down and one's high. And what this does is to put those in perspective as kind of like a time scale. Drop down means active today with a liquid water lens and frozen out is popped up above the surface with domes and, and, and solid icebergs. And so if you go to the next slide, this is that first image that I showed you of the two chaos terrains. But in fact, in this case, we're showing you the topography overlaid on top of the image. In this image, blue means low and red means high. If you look at the image on the left, which is theramacula, you'll notice that the center of the feature is depressed down below the surface. In fact, as much as 400 to 800 meters, which means that a giant pocket of liquid water still exists below this body today. What's also interesting is just like in this glass of water, the icebergs are popped up above the surface. If we look on the right image of Connemara Chaos, you'll notice that instead the terrain is much lumpier and it's characterized by this reddish color, which means that the surface is popped up and it's filled with water and then frozen. And so on the left, we have an active feature. On the right, we have an older feature that had a lake at one time, but might have already frozen out today. We've also prepared a video for you of the pro how the process might look on Europa. So we're going to show you that. Um, as we come into the video, you're going to see uh, we're flying by Jupiter, zooming into Europa, that second, second moon of Jupiter, covered with ice. And then we're snapping into a thin section so you can see, in fact, the process start to happen. If you notice, there's warm ice down from the bottom uh, right near the ocean interface, moving its way up, causing warming and causing melting, kind of right in the middle of the ice shell. As that lake starts to form, it brings the surface down because water takes up less volume than the ice it replaces. So the surface collapses down, the icebergs start to float around, break up the ice around it, and then as it refreezes, it's free to dome back up and create the features that we see today that look like Connemara Chaos. So this is in fact what we think it might be like on Europa um, as these features are forming. And to turn back to the Earth example, here is a video of this process happening in Greenland, a very similar process. What you're looking at is Jakobshavn Glacier as icebergs calve from the front of the glacier, turn over and exist. There you go, big, big iceberg flipping over and floating around in a matrix of broken up brash ice, which is rich in water, but still really a solid. So this is what it might look like on Europa if we were witnessing it relatively uh, live. So um, Tom Wagner is going to tell you a little bit more about the Earth's frozen environment.